Welcome to another video from the farm. Today I'm just going to give you a little update on our off-grid power system. So I'm sure a few of you have probably already checked out the video on building this system up. And we've got a couple of individual videos and the different parts of it and then we've got a full video out as well. If you haven't seen those, go ahead and check those out first so you can see pretty simply how easy it is to put one of these systems together. So as you would have seen in uh, one of the parts of the video, or the full video, we had someone in to complete the system for us and wire all this together. Now it's all fairly simple stuff, it's just a little bit of difficulty having the right program on your laptop to be able to configure the control box so everything runs smoothly, as well as we needed it for our insurance so everything is wired correctly, all ticked off by the accredited company that put them in, so yeah, we're fully covered now. So I'll just show you how much power we've actually generated since this system's been in. So you can see here, we've got 1400, almost 1500 watts coming in. We've got 500 going into the batteries. The actual standard sort of draw of this, this, and the uh, battery management unit inside here in the battery actually uses around 200 watts. So we've got about 800 watts going out now and that is to our fridge, a couple of little lights I've got on, and then we also have a small little oil heater going in our experimental bug breeding room. Oh, as you can see there, the little heater must have kicked itself off. So we're now back on to just the background load of the fridge, a couple of lights, and then the actual system itself. So yeah, we've got 1100 watts coming in with 1500 coming in on the panels. You can see here, power coming in so on this Victron control box this is obviously the main function and if you look you press that middle button it gives you the option for pages and menu so we'll click on the menu and then it shows us our list of devices we've got wired into it as you can see we've got the battery we've got the inverter and then we've got the solar inverter I'll just have a little look at the solar inverter and BAM right there that's how much power we've generated since we've had the system up. 650 kilowatts, basically. Now that's a lot of power. Really happy with it so far. As I say, 650 kilowatts, not bad generation. And that just shows you, if you're wanting to work out how much money you're spending on your generator, yeah times that by how much you pay per kilowatt and that's how much money we've saved already so if we're on normal mains power we've saved around 64 pounds or something there at 10 p a kilowatt but because we were running small generators before we actually have saved a lot more money than that now to generate that sort of power i mean it's well with the little generators it's not about how much power we're generating it's about how much load you're using at the time to how much fuel will come out of it so basically at our standard load which we were using for small heater fridge a couple of other things we were probably using about five ten pounds worth of fuel a day which obviously adds up to significant amounts as you can see there we've so we've saved that and we've so that means we've probably saved around 150 200 pounds as well as we've also technically saved 64 pounds if we were just connected to the grid Whichever way around you look at it, that's saving us money already and this system is going to pay for itself in no time at all. So I'll just show you, here's our inverter, all set up, currently drawing, uh, sorry, putting in 1100 watts at 5 amps at normal mains voltage. Battery box, 20 amps going in, 1000 watts going in. Now that's different because this is running at 400 or so volts this is running at 48 volts so if you work that out it's about right so really easy to navigate this boxes everything's just with this little clicky menu here or boom clicky pages and we're back to this screen so we can see what's coming in at a glance basically as you can see here when it's all wired in the state of health of the battery has gone up to 102 percent now, I don't know how that's possible. I guess we're keeping the battery in really good condition. 
by keeping it nice and warm because as you can see it tells you the battery temperature if you keep it in optimal range the battery will work better if you watched our video on building this shed as you were just about seeing there maybe we've got insulation behind all these walls pretty thick and then we've gone and plugged in a little bar heater down the side of the battery here and this thing's got an adjustable temperature so we can keep this room up, uh, basically around 20 degrees as much as possible obviously it's got a little thermostat in there that cuts itself out if the room gets warm on that so on a nice sunny day probably gets about 22 23 degrees in here with the heat of the batteries coming off it and i'll just show you how ridiculously well this sma charge controller uh sorry solar inverter actually works as you can see we've got 1600 watts coming in there off our six and a half seven kilowatt system so we've got around 25 percent 20 percent of our current power maximum capability coming in and let's just take a look how cloudy it is outside as you can see not a spot of sunshine to be had through any of these clouds we've got pretty good cloud cover today and we have had for the last few days but yeah we still get a decent amount of juice coming in from the system so I definitely recommend spending a little bit more money and getting yourself the slightly better solar inverter because obviously makes the difference when you've just got good daylight but you've got a lot of clouds you'll still manage to make yourself a good amount of power especially if you do what we've done and you rig it into a 400 volt 500 volt system rather than just rigging your panels in the standard 24 or 48 which people usually do and doing it in the 400, 500 volt range did actually save us some money on this inverter. Because this is a grid tie inverter, rather than one specifically for off-grid systems, it's enabled us to get this off the rack at a much cheaper price, because obviously a lot more people buy these than buy the off-grid ones. And it's because of this bad boy that we've been able to do that. Because this also accepts mains, also charges some solar, also charges from a generator, we can configure this thing so it acts as a mains unit from the batteries so this recognises that it's connected to a grid because this acts as a mini grid now and I have to say so far I would highly recommend getting one of these it works fantastically now whether we're drawing from the batteries powering directly from the solar inverter as you can see there the AC loads are zero because everything's coming straight from here through this into our mains box and then it's also got the option of drawing from here to create the mains from our battery bank as well as from this cable here to connect our generator so three different sources of power mean that this thing constantly puts out a mains grid energy for us to use around the rest of the farm now like I say it's working fantastic we've had zero problems so far now we have got our generator which is represented by this little red box wired on an auto start but at the time being I seem to have that in the wrong auto sl start slot on the uh, deep sea module so all of having to do is just yeah check this once or twice a day check see where the batteries are at if it gets too low I'd say around 20% is the lowest we've had it so far flick the generator on for an hour or two and we can get it back up to 100% but as we charge so well even on rubbish cloudy weather day I've just been leaving it mostly and by the end of the day we're back up to where we need to be to get us all the way through the night on battery power doesn't it look snazzy in here looks a little bit like a server I think apart from no fan noise good addition to get yourself another generator like a decent one like I say this is a backup generator that will last us forever for the system even if we upgrade it or change it We'll keep this same generator now. Real easy start with this deep sea module as well. Push that, push that, done. Generator starts, charges the battery very effectively. As I said, we've only had it on once, so we've got it rigged up. You see those two little cables on the battery there? To this little 10 watt solar panel, which is keeping the batteries topped up nicely, because we don't want this to run out of power until it comes to the time we want to use it and then we'll have to jump start the battery or something as you can see 12 8 solar power coming in off this little thing so then 
Hope you enjoyed this little update on our system, just to show you how well it is working, if you're considering getting a similar system yourself. Like I say, I would 100% recommend getting those better components. Don't be shopping on Amazon too much for stuff, just go to a proper supplier, get the things you need to do it right from the start, and it's going to save you a whole load of ball ache. I definitely recommend getting yourself lithium ion as well. These things are working out really nicely. Like I say, that one time we did put the generator on to charge these up, it was less than two hours that we put 14 kilowatts worth of energy in them. I'm 100% sure if you had a lead acid system, you would definitely not be able to put that much power in there that fast. So therefore, you've got to have your generator on longer, which therefore costs you more money to run it. And the aim of the game with putting in a system like this is to make it so your solar power powers your system as much as possible and therefore makes you your money back as fast as possible as well as saves you money. So if you're going off-grid and you're looking at an off-grid power system, I would definitely recommend getting yourself something similar to this. Technology now is really good. Basically with this, we don't even notice we don't have mains power down here because everything runs like it would if we were plugged into the grid. Right then, I hope you enjoyed this video and we're showing you how exactly how well all this system works and how easy it is to navigate the various things. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up below, give it a little comment, let me know your thoughts on having a system like this. If you want to get the slightly better stuff for less hassle, less to have to deal with, or if you'd want to get the lead acid, slightly bigger solar power bank, so you can charge it a lot over a longer period of time, stuff like that. Any thoughts, let me know. Right then, till next time, bye bye.